It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery. Carbon Express. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Wind Scent Hunting Sense. Killer Food Plots. Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants. Cabela's. Spot Shooters. Limb Walker Game Calls. Twisted Minds Bowstrings. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Antler Action. And Family Traditions Tree Stand. And don't forget you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Edmund Journal. I'm your host, Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin tonight with Dan DeFall on this glorious Mother's Day. Absolutely is. How are you doing? Hey, Andy Everhard. He's just tuned in here tonight. So Got our people joining us on the live Facebook stream. And if you're listening to the podcast and yeah. on Sunday nights, you want to catch us on the live stream of Facebook. Yeah, check it out. Check it out. Get back on Sunday night. Um, get your favorite beverage. Get your favorite mm-hmm. snack. Bring your mom. I got my uh, favorite beverage. You got my Hunter's Blend coffee here. We got our Hunter's Blend coffee for the show. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, it's uh, episode 463. 463. Marching on to 500. That's right. I tell you what, it's finally been a, a decent week. Yeah. The weather's been good. Except for a couple of days here, I, I don't know how you, I don't know how your weather was up north. It was, oh. it was a little rainy yesterday. <laughs> you, Depending on where you were, from what I heard, it was a lot of rain to no rain to. We I don't know what you had. We didn't have rain, but uh, we did have some mighty cold temperatures. It was cool. It was cool. And I don't mean as in hey, that's cool. No, it was cool as in cold. It was cold. So, um, it uh, we had frost the first morning and the second morning. The first morning, um, sitting out there. A little cool. After things kind of settled down, after the morning hunt, you know, kind of slowed down a little bit, and I wasn't on my feet. Yeah. yeah you got a little cold. Yeah, yeah. It got a little, just just a little chilly. Just you know, little. it was funny. I, I saw that on the the, uh, the TV station that the northern lower had frost freeze warnings. Mm-hmm. It was like, really? We're in May here. And yeah. It's Michigan. It uh, It was cold. Yeah, so we didn't have like a heavy frost. Frost um, second morning they called for frost freeze warning, but uh, we got up. I don't know. We was getting up at like four in the morning, four four fifteen, and there wasn't that second morning. It was like thirty six degrees. Yeah, it's cold. So, I mean, it's still cold. It is cold. So, but no, it uh, it was a good time. A uh, guy I used to work with, as uh, we talked about last week, uh, he retired in January. Uh, Randy, a buddy of mine that I've worked with for several years. I think he had 25 years in the station. Okay. I'm going on 29 this year, but uh, he's a little bit older than I am, and he retired. And before he retired, he asked me, he said, you know, would you take me turkey hunting? And I'm like, heck yeah. I said, that, that's that's a no-brainer, man. I said, we can do that, you know, that's absolutely. Sweet. So you spent the weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday up there? Yeah, we left out of town. About seven o'clock. I got out of work at five. Come home, uh, threw everything. I had already pre-packed the night before and had everything ready to go. Slammed it all into the jeep, and I'm trying to remember. There was something I was. Oh, I was trying to put my uh, my tow deck on the back of my jeep. You know, it's those platforms. They go into the yep. hitch in, yep. into a receiver, and I had a heck of a time. Uh, I call them a dog bone. It's the lock locking mechanism oh. put on it so people can't just pull a pin and take, right. take your hitch. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I had a heck of a time getting that undone to pull my hitch out and put the deck on. Uh, it was froze up. It was fro- froze up or? Seized up. Me- okay. Seized up. Mechanically. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's like, um, imagine two pieces of metal together that oxidize and they won't turn. Oh, yeah. Yep. That'll do it. And I'm like, oh, man, what do I do? What do I do? You know, in... I thought, man, eh, maybe I throw some WD forty or oil on it, and I'm like, you know, that's just going to collect more dirt, you know, and right. gum it up. And then I thought, wait, I got something here a little while back, and this is a little trick uh, I learned a while back. Uh, it's graphite. Yes, it's a powdered graphite, and we had a problem with our uh, lock here on our house season up. You so squirt it in there, squirt it in there, put the key in a couple times, three or four times to work it into the lock, and then start working, and bang, it just pops loose. Yep. I said, I've still got that here in the house. Went in, got it, squirted it in there, ran the key in three or four times, holding it, certain, and all of a sudden, bang! When it when it freed, it, it was just like glass. Well, yeah, yeah. See, the, the, it was smooth as glass. So that's pretty cool. I was a trip. Yes, graphite, especially with, especially with car doors. 
So that being working in the car industry, that's something that uh, absolutely they so, recommend, huh? Absolutely. So, uh, so okay. So if you get out of here at seven o'clock on Thursday night, you actually get up there at a pretty decent hour. Yes, um, I did stop, top off fuel, stop and grab groceries real quick. It's really nice when you hunt with somebody and they think like you as far as food goes. Okay. And you like the same things. We were in and out of that store. Just We had uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We had two breakfasts planned, two lunches planned, and one dinner that quick. And we were in and out. There you go. See? So that was nice. It is It is when you got a, a little plan together of what you're going to have. In a, yeah. Instead of doing, well, what are you going to have? What do you want? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Just have a plan, get it together, and away you go. Yeah. Well, we talked about it on, you know. The way to the store, you know, we had about an hour drive to get to where we were going to stop to get groceries, a 24-hour supermarket, and it all worked out. Yeah. Sweet. You know, when we brought back was uh, you could carry like this in a bag. There was that much left One over. One little bag of leftovers. Yeah, uh, half, a, half a gallon of milk and uh, half a jug of orange juice. That was it. Oh, that's nice. That You know what? Yeah. It, you, you did yourself well on... Uh... I don't like overpacking. No, no, you can... You can definitely do that. Yeah. Then you're bringing home just as much as it seems like you took up. Yeah, exactly. And with my dad, that's the way it goes. Oh, really? Your you take like up that? wheelbarrows full of food for two days, you know. <laughs> it's like, uh, you uh, plan on going into survival <laughs> mode up here or something for about two months? We plan on starving? <laughs> yeah. You're going to be here a while? It's just something that when my dad comes up, we never starve at camp. <laughs> right, exactly. You know? Yeah, no, I agree that uh, yeah, you, you can definitely overpack yourself and definitely... Um, get to the point where it's like really we're gonna eat all this yeah, yeah. and then it's like you wish at that point you wish it was less because it's less choices right yeah okay, i'm gonna have this that's it okay yeah you know like you said you had one dinner yeah not five dinners yeah. and said which one well, do you want i had the meat because you know i had the dough from last year we okay from camp so i grabbed a pack of steaks and uh, and took that up and, and they cut them up uh into five strips you know like so yep. and when we cooked them up I'll get into that part here a little bit later, but it was really good. Yeah, awesome. So, is that yeah. the one you had done? Yeah, up the road. Yep, down here, down the road, a little ways. But yeah, so we got our groceries, got up to camp. Um, I took the back way in, the scenic route. Not thinking, nighttime deer Dark. feeding. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Were you dodging deer? Uh, it's a across that stretch. It's twenty five miles, and we saw at least a hundred deer. At least. <laughs> Holy moly! You know, normally I can hoof it through there pretty good during the daytime. During the day, but not at night. At night, I was keeping it a little under the speed limit, but then we had to, it was like driving 40 miles an hour. Oh, jeez. You know, every time you, you come over a hill, there's a deer, there's a deer. Deer standing in the road, stop, honk the horn, come on, let's go, get get moving, girls. They're looking at you like, this is my road. Yeah, this is my road, I'm eating, leave me <laughs> yeah. alone, right? So, we got to camp. Um, unloaded real quick, you know, and rolled it, rolled it, everything into the... Uh, lodge and said, so see you in the morning at four thirty. All right. So got ready for the first hunt. Sweet. And, uh, Friday morning was your first hunt. Uh, and, uh, the weather I think was cooperating at this point. Just cold, right? You know, it, it, uh, it really was here. Let me see. I'm going to pull something up here real quick okay. for people on the live stream. You know, we eat breakfast at four thirty. I got up, I went into the bathroom. There's a window that looks due east. Yep. You know, I had to, uh, water the tree. Yep. As I'm standing at, at the urinal, I'm looking out the window at 4.30 in the morning, and there's daylight breaking. Yes, it is. At 4.30 in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, I know this. I know this. I, I sit on my way to work every day. I was just like, why so early? You know? Because you're not used to that. I'm no, used I'm, to not. That. I'm not. I'm not. I'm used to that. I'm used to going, heading south on the highway, looking yeah. to my left, going, yep, it's getting light. Well, there wasn't a lot of light. No, but you can tell it's coming. Yeah. And, with, and if it's clear... Yeah, it was. It was crystal clear. It's it, it's like in the comics when the the sun pops up. It's almost like that because yeah. it gets so light so fast, and you're yeah. like, "Wow!" So I went back in. You know, he's getting stuff ready. I had my Hunter's Blend coffee going in the the coffee maker. You know, because that's the first thing I did. I got up and got the coffee going, and uh, I said, "Dude, it's already breaking daylight." I said, "We gotta, you know, we gotta hustle up and get moving. We gotta move." Yeah. So as uh, as we started rolling through breakfast and everything we kind of hustled up and got out the door as quick as we could and when i walked outside for but those who are on the live stream th this is what we ran into but what's nice about that is it, you don't have to drive miles to get to where you're going you're there. no but we did walk out first morning okay so you walked out the first morning okay yeah. you know where that picture was yep. taken okay I know exactly so, where that. now the second picture i took we walked a little further up that hill and 
you'll be able to see that right there. You know what hill that is. Yep. And there's the moon, you know. So that was a pretty cool shot. That is cool. And I walked up, oh, maybe 300 yards from there, hammered the owl hoot call, and waited for a second. All of a sudden, blah, 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 blah. Really? You know, one kind of straight ahead, and another one, blah, 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 off to my left, and then way off to my right a little bit. I hear, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I know where those birds are at. That's back in my area where I hunt. I got an idea of where they're, they're going to come through at. I said, it's, you know, we got a half mile walk, but I said, we're gone. So we just hoofed it and took off. All right. So, you know, we get in and get set up on the birds or what we thought, you know, where we thought we should be. And uh, now are you, are you, are you, okay. So you're taking a first year hunter with you who's in tow. Yep. And you're going to be in a blind or you're going to be doing the old uh, laying up against a tree for the first morning? Laying up against a tree. Okay. Yeah, we didn't have a pop-up blind set up yet. I knew where I was going to put one, but I didn't have it in the woods yet. Gotcha. So, we get to cruising. Okay, and you know how my area is laid out. Yep. As we turn that corner uh, there where that pipe comes out of the ground, we turn that corner to hit the low road and start making the way to the end of my field. Right. That's where I was going to set up. I'm okay. Like, All right. I said, because when they get to that point, they're either going to come down the road or they're going to go into my field. It's a, like we talked before, it's a why. I said, that's where they're coming. So we get to about where my ground blind is. Okay. You know that little that I got that little trim path that leads to it there. Yep. And you're walking you're walking the low road. You're, we get you're... right there. And there's a little rise in the road. When since the last windstorm, a tree has blown down, and that road takes a little bend, and it fell on the edge of the road in the inside of that corner. Okay. So it blocked my view. Those birds are gobbling their fool heads off, and they're it sounds like they're seventy five hundred yards away. They're already at the point of the field. Really? Where it meets the road. And I'm like, I said, uh, game time change right mid, mid play here. We're, we're changing this up. He, he's like, what? What, what, what are we doing? I said, I'm looking. I'm like, I didn't want to separate us because I need to be able to talk to him and right. tell him when to shoot and what to look for, this, that, and the other, you know? So I'm looking and like, there's a clump of trees, three oak trees growing out of the ground together. And there's room for a person to get kind of in the middle of them and lean up against the side to get a shot. You know, and I was like, okay, get right here. I said, because they're going to come down this road and they're going to come out from behind that fallen tree. When they do, that's 20 yards, dead smoke. You know I mean? Yep. That's, that's easy. And, and I'm thinking, okay, if I put him here and if I stand up, I can lean up against the outside of that tree and I can shoot double up possibly. So they're gobbling, gobbling, gobbling. And at this point, I'm like, I don't need my calls. They're coming. Easy peasy. My backpack is about seven eight feet from me okay just out of arm reach okay Uh i'm up he's up he's ready got the safeties off waiting 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 they're gobbling all of a sudden they quit gobbling and we're waiting about a minute two minutes pass i'm like something's wrong i look i can't get him i said i don't want to move and get my backpack and as i i start to look back up for my backpack i my eyes catch him they're in the field oh no and here they come down the field and they're coming they're gonna walk right next to your ground blind well, about 30, 20, 30 yards outside of my okay. ground line. Yeah. All right. They're about 80 yards from us. And I see him. I go, and I just put my hand on his shoulder. I said, don't move. Three gobblers to your right. Don't move. I said, when I tell you to move, I want you to pick your gun up and swing it from in the middle of them trees to the outside and get ready to shoot. I was hoping by some stretch of the imagination, they would turn and come up through yep. there. But I knew they weren't. So I said, Go. He made the turn. He got ready. I heard the click. He's waiting. Here comes the three birds out, and they appear again from out in front of my blind. <laughs> and I'm like, I almost said when we were there standing there before we hit that tree, I almost, for a split second, ground blind, or, or you know, my, my uh, gun blind, but I didn't do it. <laughs> in, ah. in, and in hindsight, we probably would have made too much noise trying to get in, get what? the windows down, get the door, all that. But we could have set up next to it. You could have used it as cover. As right? cover, yeah. So, you know, one of those things. But that's a, like you said, that's a game time decision. You, you, yeah. You're you're on the heat of the moment. Heat of the moment. You got to make a split second decision. Yeah. And it's not like a bird that you can. It's not like a a, a game animal that you can run around and, and make off. Yeah. They'll pick you out and that'll be it. Yeah. Yeah. So they appear and and. I take that back. At one point, before we sat down, I did. I grabbed my calls and I did call. I remember that mitts back up just a little bit, and that was before we sat down because I heard them gobbling, and that's and that's when I knew they were coming. They were they're like coming on us. And that's I put everything down, and it was away from me. Okay, you know because there was a point that I was like, 
these birds hung up in the field. They got, if we're looking straight ahead, they got 90 degrees to us. They came in as far as the sound was. They were just 80 yards off of it. Yep. And they did what I think gobblers should do. They get in the field. Okay, well, there's ladies down here. We hear them. Gobble, 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 gobble. Here I am. They're in the middle. The of the, we're, yeah. we're in the most viewable area possible. Yeah, come to me. Yeah, come on, ladies. You know? Let's go. That's that's how they work. And uh, so you got them to, to within 80 yards. And, and Well, the big one. Okay, so there was there was just three, three gobblers. gobblers. That was it. Yep. Just, okay. And the boss, he was full strut, dragging wing tips, parading, doing little pirouettes, doing circles in the field. And every time he would gobble, the other two would fire off. <laughs> and this went on for like three or four minutes that they stood there and did this. And I'm just like, you stinking little so-and-sos. Yep, exactly. You know, they they, they had you. And they got kind of jiggy, and then they started off. And then they turned around and came back. Oh, really? You know, they went about 20 yards down, turned around, came back to the same spot, and did it again. <laughs> you know, and all the time, I almost reached and grabbed my call at that point when I watched them disappear. And as I started to reach for my bag, they came back. <laughs> I was like, really? You know, this is, this is the way it's going to go down. And they hung around for just, just a second or two. And all of a sudden off in the next field over, I heard, yup, yup, yup. Dude, they turned on a dime and away they away went. Away they went, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They're, uh, so that was, that was that hunt. Man. And that was your first morning. It's not over yet though. Well, that, that's gotta be exciting for him. Oh yeah, so I tell you what, let's take a break. Step outside, we come back. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up this morning. Now. So All right. uh, we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back, second shot. Yeah, easy for you to say that. Second right. segment of the show. So, after those times left, you know, I'm like, dude, that's hunting. That's the way this goes. He's hey. pumped. He's pumped. He's like, dude, that was cool. He says that. He says, I couldn't let you got three gobblers out there and they're doing their thing. And watching them all gobble together, you know. And the sun was coming up behind him. Oh, jeez. And, and you've seen the photos of what it looked like, you know, on the live stream there. I showed everybody. So... It was crystal blue skies, sun just... Not a cloud in the sky. Yeah, you know, and by the time them birds come down, that was about 6 o'clock. So, sun wasn't over the horizon yet, but it was light. It was full light. Okay. So, it uh, it was just incredible. That's awesome. So, after that, he's like, well, what do you what do you want to do? What do you think we ought to do? And I said, well, I said, they're going that way. I said, I got an idea of where they're going. I said, there's only one of two places they can really go direction-wise to hit fields. And I said, that's probably what they're going to do. You know, they get a hold of the ladies or whatever. They're going to go looking after that. I said, let's swing, instead of going that, let's swing back around where we came in and circle up on the field and set up and see if we can call them around. Okay. Or just wait for them. So that's what we did. We went up and set up, set up against another tree overlooking a field. And uh, the field kind of tapered around to our left and disappeared. But, I mean, it went way on down. And we sat there for a good hour, hour and a half. And, you know, every now and then I'd call. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, we, we kind of hear something down that way. We heard, we thought we heard a yelp, and I'd call a little bit, nothing, nothing, nothing. And I said, well, I said, let's just do a little sneak. Let's go down to the edge of that field and see if we can see down the length of it. Okay. And as we get down there, sure enough, we see some birds just over the hill kind of drops. We can just see heads. Oh, okay. You know, so, and then they kind of, they just kind of disappeared. We could tell they were walking kind of away. I said, let's skirt the edge, keep low to the ground. Let's get down there and see if we can kind of get close to them and call 
because I didn't know if they were hens. You know, I thought they were heads. Yeah, I thought they were hens. That's what it looked like. And we got down, and I kind of come up on my knees, and I get my glasses, field glasses up, and looking, looking, looking. And I see, it, it, oh, it's a hen. Okay. So we're watching her, and he goes, he's standing behind me. So he's got a little bit better oh, bandage. Oh, okay, all right. He goes, he said, there's three more gobblers. And he goes, one of them's fanned out. And I said, where? I can't see him. He tells you, like, straight ahead. I, said, I couldn't see him. Okay. So we're we're waiting. It's with a hen. The hen's walking away. I get the, get out the old limb walker. Yup, 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 yup. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. And nothing. Well, he says, you know, we're watching, watching. I said, any reaction? He's like, no. He said, actually, he said, they're chasing the hen off. And the hen disappeared. She squirted down and took off out through a logging cut. Okay. So, and they followed her out. Oh, yeah. They're, they're... And by that time, it was like 9 o'clock. And I was like, uh, to get in front of them birds, we're going to have to r- run half mile this way and another half mile to get back just to where they come out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said, and if you run behind them, we're, I said, we're not going to catch them. Right, them. exactly. So, so we called it a morning. That was that was the first day, or the first morning hunt. Exciting for them, I bet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I bet you uh, it, it's always good to get to t- get an a newbie out there and, and hear it oh absolutely i mean just hearing gobblers you know that's that's half the battle you know of, of being just to let somebody know that there's actually birds in the area you know this this was us setting up that was the the second set of the morning um uh, you know me gotta have my coffee yes you do you need your coffee <laughs> for those of you on the podcast i'm showing a photo of where we were set up at mm-hmm. that's randy sitting to my left and I got the limb walkers out and my shotgun laying there and exactly. took the coffee break. And, well, hey, you're in the woods having a cup of coffee. You got your gun, so you're always hunting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, well, this is this was during that lull between the time we got there and the time we actually got up and went after him. So, but uh, no, it was it was a great morning. He, you know, he had a blast. Um, you know, he he said he learned a lot just seeing those gobblers and seeing how birds work and. You know, calling. He just he he'd ask a lot of questions about calling sequences and cadences and things of that nature, and even the owl. Speaking of owl, we're you know I did the the who cooks for you, who cooks for you too. Right. The second morning, we're going into the woods, and I'm getting ready to call, and we hear a barred owl. He, okay. Hoo 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 hoo. He didn't do you who cooks for you too. He just did who cooks for you, who cooks for you. Oh, really? And I'm like. Hmm. And then off in the distance, same thing. Another one. And then off in a different direction, a third one. We had three owls in there and they were calling each other, but they didn't have the last part of that cadence. Okay. I've always heard who cooks for you, who cooks for you too. Yep, that's everything I've read and seen. Yeah. And so about. I don't know. In northern Michigan, maybe we got owls that take shortcuts. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe they drop off as part of the sentence. Yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, it was it was noticeable. Well, now I got to listen next time I hear the owl. Because after last week's show, Kelly sent us a picture of a barred owl that was in the backyard. Right. So now I got to, now I'm going to listen now. Okay. I usually hear them either at night or I'll hear them in the morning when I'm going okay. to work. And, and uh, Randy, who went with me, he, he watch he's a bird watch. He loves watching all okay. kinds of birds and he knows his birds. And all of a sudden we also heard, whoo, I mean, just real loud. I mean, it was real close. One one who he goes that's a great horned owl he goes we got great horned owls up here i go i, <laughs> I said i guess so because i don't know I, said, I don't know but yeah it was a different it was a whole different hoot really yeah yeah so i learned something from him and so now you've got now you know you got two species of owls yeah yeah evidently wow so, that is so cool yeah so you know when when you're you no know, i'll have to listen for that too but so far, I've only got the one species of owl that I know of. Okay. So after that, we went back in, eat lunch, come back out for the evening hunt, um, grabbed a pop-up blind, drove the Jeep in to a somewhat close spot so we didn't have to carry a pop-up blind on my shoulder and all the gear and everything. Right. Then we – actually, I, I take that back. We drove, I drove up to my high road blind, grabbed a chair, come back down, and then we carried the chair and the blind from that localized spot. Right, yeah. And as we walked past, grabbed the other chair out of – my low road blind, so we had two chairs to sit on, and went down, set them up, and set up for the evening hunt. All right, Getting, set them right there, and set up right where them birds came through that morning, right where I wanted to be, where the field and the road come together. Okay, you know, and now this this is what you talked about last week. This is the spot that you you visualize mm-hmm. setting this blind up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you did do that, and you're ready to go. Had I set the blind up, or had we got to that point earlier that morning, you, you they would have been right in your lap. They'd been right there. 
So, and actually, I got them on trail, a passenger trail cam, knowing that knowing that that's where they came from. What time do you think? What time do you think it was when they when you first um, you heard them, and then you got to that that oak tree? Was it already? Oh, it was well past shooting. Like, I think shooting shooting time was, was six something, probably early. I think it was five early, something. It was five something. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but we were out the door and on uh, in the woods. And when I hit that hoot owl call, it was five thirty a.m. Okay. And and by the and I looked at by the time they left the field, um, you know what? It was like six twenty six thirty. And you know what? And being there, it was it was daylight. Yeah, and there was no clouds, no nothing to slow them down. So mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was daylight quickly yeah i think they i think they pitched down quick yeah Yeah, so their day started right off the bat instead of being cloudy or something like that or foggy kind of they just hold up a little bit absolutely because that's what um because when i had that hen come down out of the roost that's what it was it was like a a, a, it was a foggy morning the fog rolled in okay off the field so it was kind of really misty because she didn't pitch down till okay later right so i was just wondering so yours crack of daylight yeah, you know, they said okay, we're we're on the move. Yep, yeah, and it happened quick. Okay, so we got the blind set up, set up, uh, got set in there, and by the time we got in the blind, it was three thirty, you know, and I knew the birds came through that area at about four thirty. Okay, between four thirty and and six, been seeing them on trail camera passing through there on a pretty regular basis. So we're sitting there three thirty. Well, four thirty, ding 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 ding, here they come. Really, they're coming back from the way. They're coming back, going the way they came from in the morning. All right. From where we were sitting, we're looking straight out at the field. I can see the road going to the north, and he's looking, and he can see the road going to the south. And he can see to where the tree is laying down at the bend in the road. Okay. And he goes, hey, hey, two birds, two two uh, turkeys just came around that corner. And I look, and I'm like, let me dang. Yep. <laughs> Binoculars up. Yep, those are two gobblers. Get ready. So... You know, you get the gun ready. We just waiting for him to come down. Get a little closer before he takes safety off. Just sitting there waiting, and they come about. They're they're a hundred yards away, right? They get to about eighty yards, and they go, boop, into the field. <laughs> and I was like, okay, no problem. They're gonna feed through the field and come on down, and they'll be right here, dead front center. No big deal. So we watch them go in the field. I swing. I got the camera with me. I swing the camera around. And I'm taking a little bit of video when I can see them busting through the weeds and the trees. They get in the field. Okay, guys, you can turn at any point in time. No. They cross the field, go into the brush on the other side, and go into back into the another field. Really? Yeah. And and they 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 squirt through two other fields and go back out to the east. <laughs> and there's really no other way back to the fields. I mean, it dead ends back there. But I know they roost back there, too. Right. So I'm like, okay. So they're going to roost back there tonight. Mental note, you know, remember that. So we're sitting there just waiting for the day to finally finish out. Maybe something will come from the other direction. And I can, I'm i looking up there, and all of a sudden, whoa, there's a turkey. Get the binoculars up. But it's going away from me. <laughs> you didn't pass in front of me. You didn't pass through the field. The only thing I can figure is it came off the Oak Ridge behind us, and came out and around and squirted and hit the road and was going yep. to the north. I'm like, well, okay. And then about the last half hour of the day, we're getting bored. You're sitting there. You're in a, you're in a pop up blind. You can kind of talk lightly, yep. you know, and you're watching. And I look to the left, you know. I'm looking, nothing, nothing, nothing. I turn back. We're talking for maybe thirty seconds. All of a sudden, he goes, "Bird." And I go, "Where?" He goes, "Right there." And I turn and look, and there's a hen, fifteen <laughs> yards in front of us. Boop, 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 and turns and runs back and goes back the other way. <laughs> Where did you come from? I just looked 30 seconds up the road, and it would take you a good minute, minute and a half to get to us. I don't know where she came from. have no clue where she came wow. from. Wow. So She probably came up from behind you, heard the voices, and probably kind of was like, could, what, what's going could on? Could have, yeah. She could have come off that oak ridge. Yep, and just kind of, what's going on? And then when you finally did move, she's mm-hmm. like, ah, okay, mm-hmm. enough of that. I'm out of here. Right. So, And that was, that was hunt. Wow. Into the hunt. So we went back. Got back to camp at about, oh, 8.30. Made dinner. Cooked up steaks. Cooked up my deer steaks. Kind of changed the subject a little bit here for dinner. Okay. I did something with the steaks that I've always prepared deer meat a certain way. But my dad has always said, he's like, you ought to try to cook it in uh, extra virgin olive oil. He says they cook up real nice in that. Okay. I'm like, eh, yeah, yeah, whatever. I do mine my own way. When we get up to camp, I'm like, Okay, there's these there's these strips, you know, they're 
you know, about two inches wide and about four or five inches long. Right. And I'm like, I don't really, you cook them on the grill. It's going to cook them right up. They'll shrivel up, be dry. I said, what am I going to do? Looking in the cupboard and I go, extra virgin olive oil. Well, let's try it. I was like, well, never done this before. We'll try it. So I put them in there, put some mushrooms in there. We had some veggies and, uh. It was awesome. Really? Yeah, they were really, really good. Did you salt and pepper and then just... No, it... I did that. I put a little pepper on it afterwards. Okay. So, yeah. Put it all in the same pot and yep. in the pan and just... Well, I cooked cooked the meat and then towards the end threw the mushrooms okay. in it. Right, yeah, yep. did that towards the end. And uh, yeah, it came out great. Nice. nice and juicy and yeah, it was awesome. It's always good to have a good dinner at the end of the day. Oh, dude, I was I, I was ready to go to bed. <laughs> well, yeah, no doubt. Slept like a baby, right? Exactly. You Actually, a, I didn't. I tossed and turned most of the night. But you have a good dinner. It's usually what happens. Yeah. So, I'll tell you what. We're bumping up on second break here. Why don't we take our next break? And come back. We'll we'll talk about uh, yesterday's hunt. All right. Let's talk about it. All right. We'll be right back after this. PSE archery has always dominated the speed category. Now. The most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back, third segment of the show. Uh, Dan, before we get going too far here, uh, I got to give a shout out to one of our sponsors here, Lim Walker Game Calls. You know, right there, there's three of their calls that uh, we were using in the field the slate, the aluminum, and the red slate. Yep. And uh, I really didn't have to use the aluminum. Uh, it wasn't windy. Right. Didn't have to throw calls a long way. And, uh, but yeah, the, uh, the slate and the, the red slate got got used quite a bit, especially the second day. That's that's when okay. I really went to town on them. So I just wanted to give uh, Tim C.S. there a, a quick shout out. Lim Walker Game Calls. Go over on Facebook, check out his uh, Facebook page, and he does a live stream every Friday night at seven, eight o'clock, eight o'clock. I always mess that up, but I think he did one last night. He must have switched nights because I think he did it last night. Okay, but he'll tell you if he's doing it. Uh, Jason Radecki, uh, Mike, he just joined in. Did you say anything about the link I sent you about New York and the schools? Not yet. Not Save yet. that for the end of the show. End of the show. Remember that. All right. So, all right. So, second day, second morning. Get up. Bright and early? Bright and early again. Actually, we got up a little bit earlier because of what happened. Day before? <laughs> First day. You okay. Know? So, we got up half, We got up 4 a.m. Got up, had breakfast, got out the door, and actually drove out. So, we were in the field probably a good... 30 to 40 minutes sooner than what we were the day prior. Okay. But we had overcast skies. Um, I don't have it. I took a picture, but I don't have it loaded here to show on the live stream. But yeah, there, it was more cloud cover. And as we're driving out, I'm like, okay, so what do you want to do this morning? How, how do you want to play this? It's, you know, you this is your first, first time up hunting. You know, I'll cater to whatever you want to do. He said, well, you know, I listened, listened to some of the calls you were making and I saw what we did. And he says, you know, he said, what do you think about me going back and setting up in the pop-up blind by myself and trying my luck? And I said, well, I said, I think that'd be a good idea. That way, you know, you can kind of get some hands-on experience of, of a hunt by yourself and, you know, kind of feel your way through it. Right. So I walked him down to the corner, you know, or the, the crossroads of the two tracks mm-hmm. there, and I said, okay, 150, 200 yards that way is the pop-up blind. And I said, if you, if, uh, you miss it, you're blind. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, because it's sitting literally, you know, 10 yards off of the... It'll be the, two the, big, track, big, the big blob. blob. And I said, I'm going down through this field where them birds went last night, and I'm going to go sit down here. And I said, uh, I'll let you know when I get down there. I'll, I'll text you. And uh, I said, but I'm, before I get set down, I'm going to do a, I'm going to throw a hoot owl call. And I did. Nothing. You know, okay. Nothing at all. So I get down to that field where I want to set up, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, you know, I know this field, and I really didn't think it through. It's like, there's really not any trees to set by here. Mm, nowhere to sit. That's going to break up my silhouette. 
you know? And I finally found one on the left side of the field, and I set up on it, and I'm kind of sitting there, sizing it up, leaning against it, and I'm looking. I'm like, if them birds come out of that far field to this one, I said, they're going to be 10 yards in front of me before I see them. I said, this ain't going to work. <laughs> I don't want to be surprised. So I got up, got my gear together, and I'm kind of walking around a little bit, looking, looking, looking. All of a sudden, back from not really where we parked, but in, in almost to where we set up on that morning hunt, the second the second set okay. of that morning hunt the day prior, over in that field, I hear, gobble, 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 gobble. Oh. I'm like, okay, I can call you over here. But I've got to make, you know, I, I want about 150 yards set up on the edge of a field. He was on the next one over. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to sit here. I'm not going to rush the hunt this morning. I'm just going to let it unfold. I'm going to call and just take my time. I got set down, got the limb walker out, made some a couple calls real quietly. Nothing. Got a little louder. All of a sudden, he fires off again. Oh, like, okay. All right. Let's see what's going on here. And I let it play for about 10, 15 minutes. And all of a sudden, it sounded like he had moved a little bit. And he moved down to the end of this field, which was only about 250, 300 yards from where I was at. Well, my mic, inner mic kicked in. Oh, boy. And I'm like, I got to (laughs) go. It's time to go. So I got all my stuff up. And, man, I'm hoofing it across the field. And I get over to a two track and I, I stop and I'm waiting and I'm listening and I hear him gobble 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 I said okay he's in the middle of that field I know there's a rise there in the middle of that field I can I can work my way up in and he's on the other side of that rise there's a little narrow just wide enough to get my jeep through track to get to that field I okay said, I said okay I'm gonna go on that because it comes up on top of a hill and I can get on top and maybe spot him so I drop all my gear off almost top of the hill I had one of those hunter sa- uh, specialty seats. Yep. If you fold the back two legs up, it makes a ramp. Yes. And you can lay on it, and it gets your body up so you can shoot, and you can see with binoculars really nice, and you don't have the weight on your elbows. So that's what I did. I got to the top of that hill, and I'm glass, and I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. And all of a sudden, I hear a gobble, and I look down there, and he's at the other end of the field. And he is just letting some jakes have it. Oh, really? Yeah, they're just, you know, it's they're chasing each other around, and he starts to chase them off the field. And I'm like, oh, I know where they're going. They're going They're going to pass right in front of where we set up the last set yesterday morning. Oh, geez. And there's a spot. If I get down there quick enough, I can call them through. There's a little ravine. I can call them through that ravine. Got my stuff. Come back out. Boom, man. I just, <laughs> dude, I'm running up this two-track, hoofing it. And I get about three quarters of the way there and all of a sudden i hear gobble 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 gobble, and he's like 150 yards in front of me i'm like whoa i hit the brakes and i'm like what do i do what do i do what do i do and i'm looking around i was like i gotta i gotta set up because about 30 yards in front of me the road makes a hard right hand turn and i said if i call it he comes through the road he straight ahead comes through that thick end of the road i said that's dead shot there's a tree on the ground it's huge i mean literally what's that two foot three foot across you know 30 inches in diameter yeah big Eight foot long piece of pine that they cut down that was too big for the mill. Oh, they never took it. Okay. So it's laying there. And I'm like, I got right at the end of it, set up, put my gun up, and I was like, it's a perfect tabletop shot. I'm like, cool, this is great. Cause I can let the gun here, I can call the whole nine yards being hid and shoot him. I call. Yup, 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 yup. Buck, buck, buck. Yup, yup, yup. Come, 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 come. I'm like, game on. Put the call down, had my mouth call in, I'm waiting, waiting. About, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute goes by. Back at the other end of the field where I started from, I hear, yop, 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 yop. Oh, no. I'm like, oh, no. And he fires off. There's a hen down there. <laughs> and, I'm like, and I know what happened the other day. I'm like, oh, no, you don't. I picked up the call, got old limb walker running. Yup, yup, yup. So I cut in. Yup, yup, yup. She starts, burp, 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 burp. and I start just cutting on it hard, doing the same thing. And we're just fighting back and forth in. The hair in the back of my neck standing up. All of a sudden, the gobblers, there's, I think there was three of them, they're firing off. Blah, 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 and we're, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> the woods is just exploding. And we go at it for like three, four minutes. It's just constant battle. And I'm like, man, I'm over calling. I know I'm over calling, but I, I can't let her call them off. Right. Of and I know they're only 100, 150 yards away. They just, they wouldn't come through that ravine, is what I figured. Well, all of a sudden, is in the battle i hear them they had moved straight from me they had moved off about probably 30 degrees to my left they're cutting back through the end of that field i'm like oh geez got all my stuff up 
boom, I run all the way back down to where I started. But I didn't get to that little tiny road. Okay. I made it maybe 20 yards from it. And I hear him gobbling. And I hear the, her cutting and putting. And I'm like, they're going to come down that, that little tiny road. So I just flopped on the side of the road, got my chair underneath my chest, got my gun up. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. And about 60 yards in front of me, I see her squirt through. And I'm like, how did she get through there? <laughs> you know? And it didn't dawn on me, but that's the logging cut. So it's open. Right. She just cruised right on through. I'm like, oh, no. And then I'm looking. Here comes two or three other birds behind her. I'm like, oh, geez. So I watched, and they, they got out to the road and went away from me. And the road makes a hard right-hand turn. As soon as they made that turn, they disappeared. I got up, got all my gear, and I went as far as I thought I could get without getting busted. And I see them cutting through. I see the heads moving through the trees on the road, you know. I can see gaps in the trees. And they hit that f- the next field. And I'm watching, I'm watching, and I'm starting to get ready to move. And I move a little bit down, and they turn, and they start coming back. I don't know what scared them. Something busted them, and they started coming back up the road. Oh, boy. I'm in the wide open. Oh, here we go. I'm like, there's, there's no cover. I'm standing at the edge of the logging cut. I just flopped on the side of the road, got the gun up, and I'm waiting, waiting, and waiting. And I see one head pop out in a little little opening, and that was it. I sat there for 30 minutes on the ground. They must have went on the opposite side of the road and took off. Yep, just kept on cruising. Yeah, I was just like, oh, jeez. <laughs> so, <sighs> so the scolded hen scolded me. Yeah, you got, you got, you got scolded. That was, that's pretty wild, dude. I, I bet you, I ran easily a mile, mile and a half, just that quick, zipping around. Yeah, you know, back and forth. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and that was just on that road. I didn't count getting over there the first time. It, it was, it was wild. I felt like I'd been in a track meet, you know, but that's, uh, that's hunting. Well, exactly. That's hunting. You don't know, you know, another time you might be doing this, they're going to walk right out in front of you and that'll be it. Well, and that's, you know, I'm like, my inner mic kicked in again, like yeah, I said, and I started chasing and pushing. Did I push? Did I, did I do something wrong? I, I don't know. You know, I hear so many people say, you know, I don't run and gun because I don't like pushing the birds. I like letting them come to me eventually. And if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. But sometimes I think... I might be getting just a little bit antsy and pushy and, and, and just getting getting too aggressive. Right, exactly. Like you said, you might have been calling too much. You yeah. might have been moving too much. Yeah. You might have been just letting it play out. Yeah, but but Randy was about... See, because really, think about that now. If if you would have been where you started where when that hen came out and was calling... If I'd have stayed if there... If you would have stayed there and let that play out, she would have brought them right to you. She would have brought them right in front of me, probably within 10, 15 yards. Right. Yeah. When I was laying down, and I snuck up to the edge of that field. Yeah, yeah, because it was a it was just a little narrow shoot, and then it opens up into that cut. Yeah, she that's where she came through, and, and that's the other thing. It's like if you stayed put, you'd have got it. Gonna have to get you some anchor shoes, I guess. I don't know. But, so how did he? How was he doing? You you had this morning going. This was yesterday morning. Yeah, he didn't how see was, a bird. He didn't see a bird. No, he had a deer, a doe walk up within about fifteen twenty yards from him. He was he actually he got out of the pop up blind. Because he's, he's got a little bored, and he's like, I'm going to go sit over in that deadfall at the edge of the field. Okay. So he's sitting there, and this doe sees him and starts walking up to him and kind of turning her head and looking <laughs> curious, you know, like, what are you? And guy was in about 15, 20 yards, and then all of a sudden figured out that he wasn't a tree and <laughs> took off. <laughs> you're, you're moving. I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. You know, that's speaking of that, uh, so he didn't see nothing. Did you see a lot of deer? Um, we did yesterday evening. Okay. But before that, no. Okay. No. Um, but I I said, did you hear birds? He's like, yeah. He says, back to my left, he said, I heard a couple of hens, and he said, I heard gobblers. I go, that was me. <laughs> I said, one of the hens was me. He goes, that was you? And I go, yeah. He goes, he said, man, he says, it sounded like two birds fighting. I said, thank you. That, that, <laughs> that's, yes. That's what I wanted. I said, good. It sounded good then. That, that's right. Yeah. Um, okay, so that was yesterday morning's hunt. Yep. So you got one more evening to go here. Mm Mm-hmm. But we're going to save that for the next segment here. Exactly. Let's step outside. We'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a vapor shooter? 
Find out at PSCArchery.com. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back to the last segment of the show. Last part of the hunt. Saturday evening. Saturday evening. I didn't have a clue as what to do. Okay. Birds were scattered all over. I know they're usually a little more tight-lipped in the evening. And, you know, I said, I said, Randy, I said, I don't know. I don't know what, what we're going to do. I said, we can go down and set in the pop-up blind and hope for the best, you know, see if they come back through. Because what I was seeing on trail camera, they were coming through that area about every other day. Okay. If they came through twice the day before chances are they're not going to come back through that afternoon he goes well why don't we just check your trail cameras and see what's on them i said that's a good thing i said we can see if birds have been through the area since this morning and see what direction they're going. right see we'll see where they're headed maybe so that was at 3 30 in the afternoon okay at 2 30 in the afternoon so you now you're checking your camera yeah i checked the first camera at 2 30 in the afternoon an hour prior to us getting there three long beards walked in front of that camera heading to the north and you were back at the cabin. Yep. Yep. Uh, that's good. And I was like, this sucks. And he goes, what? And I go, I said, an hour ago, I said, three birds went that way. Three three long birds. I said, look, here they are. Right here on, on the tablet. <laughs> I download the photos, you know. <laughs> and uh, he says, well, what do we do? I said, well, I said, we've got a scouting report right here. It says those birds went that away. I said, why don't we go that away? Right, exactly. You know, and he's like, well, I said, they're either between here and the north end of the property or they're at the north end of the property. I said, let's go back to the Jeep. It's a five-minute walk. Take the high road up. That way we'll be on the edge of the property. We'll skirt on the high side. They're down here on the low side. If we pass them, we're not going to bump them. We'll just drive down here and park and then walk in. I said, I got two spots we can set up. Okay, let's do it. Game plan. Boom. Here we go. Good. Good. So we drive Good game plan. Drive to the north end of the property. We get out about five, uh, 400 yards from where we need to be. And there's a little tiny mowed path that skirts the edge of this big, huge hay field. And this hay field is about 300 yards long and about 150 yards wide. It's huge. Wow. And you got to walk about 350, 400 yards to get down to the end, make the turn, come in. There's a little pinch point down at that end. It's a mowed strip about 25 yards wide and about 50 yards long that leads into another smaller food plot. Okay. At the end of that food plot, it's a bunch of red pines, and then birds sometimes will roost in those trees. And I thought, let's go sit on the pinch point. I think we can sit there. Birds will squirt through there, hopefully, in the evening to roost. And we'll see them coming from 300 yards away. So we get down there, kind of set up. I'm looking. There's four trees, big pine trees. And one of them's about two or three yards off the field. The other one's about five yards off the field and about three or four yards behind the other one. And I'm looking at the setup. I'm like, I can see the birds. If I sit here in this front one, I can look and glass this field and watch. But I said, man, if I if I put him back here in the one behind me, he can only shoot a short distance here and then, and then watch the short field. And if he does, what's going to happen is the birds come out, they're going to be on him that quick. Oh, okay, yeah, they'll be right there in front of them. Your head's got to be constantly on a swivel. Look, 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 glass, glass, you know, the whole nine yards. Be watching. So I put him up front. So he's facing down the field. I am behind him and kind of staggered on a diagonal. Okay. And I'm sitting 90 degrees his opposite. So I'm looking across the short shoot. He's looking the length of the short shoot. So in being a left-handed shot, I can shoot in front of me. I mean, right-handed shot, I can shoot in front of me and then to my left to the short field. He's facing 90 degrees the opposite direction. He can shoot straight away straight away, and then across the short short shoot. We're there half hour, maybe. I got, I'm got. i still going through photos. I got my, my tablet uh-huh. out in my lap. I got my gun up, got my calls, and I'm, I'm, I'm sliding, sliding a picture, looking, and I'm looking up. I'm looking, looking to my left, looking straight ahead, looking back, swiping another picture. So I'm, you know, making the rounds, constantly watching. And all of a sudden he goes, Mike, birds. And I'm at that point I'm I'm I got I'm looking at my tablet. <laughs> and I and I, I just cast my eyes up and look straight ahead. Look to my left, don't see anything. So I scan to my right, 
there's two gobblers standing in the grass, in the short shoot, 25 yards in front of him. And then I kind of turn my head slow and look at him. His gun is in his lap and his hands are down. Oh, jeez. And, I'll, and he, we're, we're too far away for him to hear me. Yes. You know, he's, he's just, just has a little bit of hearing loss. And I'm like, don't move. I said, or pick your gun up and just shoot. <laughs> right? You know, and, you know, at that point, what happened is he was looking straight ahead and he wasn't looking to his, his left at all. And you can see into the woods a good 50 yards past the field. Oh, boy. They come in and he, he just, he, he, he missed him. Yeah, he missed him. He didn't see him coming in. You know, had you seen him coming in, you, the way the set was, he could have got the gun in his hands because it, it kind of rolled off. Okay, so if they would have been walking. If you'd have seen him, yeah, and get their head behind a tree or head down, then you get up. You know? Right, exactly. You get ready for him, right? Yeah. <sighs> and I seen him, and I was like, and I finally just said, just shoot. And it, it took about five, maybe ten seconds. They're like, something ain't right and here. They're out of uh, well, let's go back. Oh, and, man. You know, they turned and went back in the woods. I, I'm glassing them, and I see them, and they just disappear. And that was it. <laughs> I'm like... I said, "What happened?" He goes, he said, "I was just looking the other way, you know. Got caught, so that's got hunting. caught with the gun in your lap." I couldn't have shot. I mean, if I'd have been a left-handed shooter to make that swing, I could have shot. But if, like, for where you and I are sitting, I'd have been shooting like this, oh, not right. over your shoulder, but it way been, too close. It would have been loud. It'd have been a muzzle blast. Right, exactly. Yeah. You don't, it want, just you don't want to do that. That's not safe either. So yeah, it was his shot to take. I mean, we'd already designated. Okay, that tree right there. Anything to the left is mine. Anything to the right is yours. You they know? were on your side of the tree, and they were they were definitely on his side. So <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, and he wasn't sure of the distance either. He's like, you know, he said I thought they might have been too far from where I was sitting, because as soon as they took off, I grabbed my rangefinder and hit hit the tree that they came out by. It's twenty eight yards. He was a good three or four yards closer. Oh, so I was like, yeah, I said that's that's duck soup. But I said, don't worry, that's happened to me before too. That's that's hunting. Yeah, that's hunting. learning, right? Yeah. You know, so, so actually we got up and moved back to the short field, um, after that, like a half hour after that happened. Cause you know, we're getting towards the later part. Oh yeah. It's getting late. I like, if they're going to roost, they're going to roost down here in this field. So we moved down there. It got to be seven thirty. last shooting light, I think was eight thirteen fourteen or something like that. Seven thirty. he turns around and he goes, I'm bored. I can't take it anymore. He said, let's just go. Okay, fine. That's cool. So I packed up my stuff. We step out from underneath these two big pine trees, and as I'm getting walking out, he goes, uh, Mike, there's three turkeys down the middle of that field about 200 yards. And I said, seriously? He goes, yep. So I, I stand up. I mean, they're a ways away, and I get my I can't see them with a the naked eye. I see a dot. That's all I can see. Okay. Get my glass, field glasses up, and I'm looking. My binoculars. I'm like, yep. I said, one, two, three, yep. Okay, two, looks like two times, and a hen. I said, I'm going to try to call. I said, 30 yards straight ahead, get behind that clump of trees. He does. I kneel down. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I just hammer it, you know. Get the glass, feel the glasses up. Look, they're just walking off, you know. I'm like, okay. I said, well, the, where they walk to, that field has an opening. It it opens up past that short shoot, and they disappear behind them trees. And there, there's two little bends in that, that side of the field. Okay. I said, let's go, man. I said, he goes, what? I said, we're running. I said, we can get all the way up to that point where they disappeared without him seeing us. I said, we got cover we're running <laughs> get up to that corner i get i get down on the ground and i kind of ease out from that tree and i thought i seen the bird get my binoculars up and look I'm like, yep okay that's the end she's she's like 30 yards right there i said get up there come on you go by me he goes what am i gonna do i go army crawl right to that corner i said if you see the time i said shoot it <laughs> right you know so he uh, he he comes up around the corner and he gets up there and he waits for a second and then he stands up and i'm like yeah there can't be any birds you know, they must be already gone. And they were. They they went on. Oh, okay. Place. So after that, we just we called it a day and came home. There you go. So overall, did he enjoy it? He had a ball. He said, you know, he said, I, I'd never been before. I wanted to see what it was like. He said, it was exciting. He said, yeah, I got bored this afternoon. And you got a picture with him before you left the field or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Yep. I forgot. I got that in here. Yeah. Let me show the people on the live stream. Might as well. Well, actually, you know what? Let's, I want to show you. This, when he missed that bird, or when the bird came in on him, that was the setup right there. Oh, okay. See, he, that tree behind me, you can see yep. his shoulder sticking out. Yep. And it came from your left. They came from the left. Yep. Left of that photograph. And he was looking probably straight out. He's looking straight ahead. Yep. And you see where the trees, you can see up there about uh, 75 yards where the trees 
kind of jut out. Yep. That right there, um, it does that twice. Makes two right hand bends in that, that field. And the first one, like I said, 75 yards. The other one's probably another 125, 130 yards. Jeez. And that's what we ran up to there at the end. But uh, yeah, yeah, he had a ball. You know, it was a good time, and hopefully got him hooked on on turkey hunting now. And well, on the way home, we were talking, and uh, he said to me, he said, you know, he said, uh, I think this is something I could do with my son over on because his son lives over near Grand Rapids. There's some birds over there. Yeah, and he and he said, but I don't know where to hunt. And I said, well, there's I think there's plenty of state land. Yeah, there's some I said, plenty of opportunity over there. I said we can ask some guys and ask around, and you know. I said, they're not going to give you their spot, but I said, they'll tell you maybe a general area. Right, you know? exactly. So we'll see what happens. Oh, so, that'd be awesome. So, yeah, he's, he's, he says, I, I'm ready to go again next year. So, yeah, he's Good hooked. deal. He's hooked. So. Excellent, excellent. He said that the biggest thing, the biggest thrill for him was the first morning watching those three times do their thing. Oh, that, that's, the, seeing that is just amazing. Mm-hmm. Especially if he's first morning out. Yeah, right, you know, first morning out and bang, you have something like that and it hits, it's... Yeah, that's that's the way to get people exactly. into it and get excited. So exactly, well, uh, sounds like a good hunt had by all. Yeah, it was. I had a great time, and, and I learned a few things along the way. You learned about an owl, and you learned yeah. about getting scolded by him. Yes, I got talked to. You did. You got a yeah. talking to and lost. Yeah, I did. I had to go sit in the corner. You did. <laughs> you just sit down there, and I'll take the boys. Yeah, yeah. That's what kind of what happened, man. <laughs> so, but before we go. Um, this weekend, I got a we got a message uh, sent to us from Jason Radecki. Yep. Uh, to a link, and it was out of the state of New York, and there's some legislation that's being proposed in the state of New York to ban any shooting sports in the school. You know, like skeet teams, skeet archery. Archery was another one. Trapping, anything to do with the outdoors, they're wanting to completely ban any affiliation within the school, like the National Archery in the School program. Yeah. In light of what's happened recently, and I don't mean I'm not making light of that. No, no, but no. But that's no. their reason. The, the, that's they're using that as the the basis for this legislation. It sounds like. Yep. Yep. So yeah, one of the one of the Democrats in that that state is putting forth a bill to try to because get this that'll promote it. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, well, when you have a mass shooting with archery equipment, it you know right you know it happens. Yep. You, you know you're. you're <laughs> And trapping. And, well, trapping's a good one. You know, yeah. you, you could probably have a, a mass trapping. Yeah. You know. You, <laughs> right. Right. I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to make light of that school shooting. It's just the fact of what people are trying I'm to just, do. It's just another way to try to strip people away from doing things. Right. Exactly. And, and the best part is I'd really like to know this person, the, that senator's background. Right. What's he or she do. She. Does or doesn't do or, or what's her. I guess I'm gonna. I, I didn't see it. I saw the headline and I just, I just shook my head. I was like, really? Oh, did you look it up? Yeah, I looked it up. Okay. And I'm like, right. okay, uh huh. Because you know, we talked to Tristan mm-hmm. Cole here, and, and and he's doing exactly the opposite. Opposite by taking those senators and and, and, and representatives that don't do it and yep. say, hey, come with me. I'm gonna, let's show you how much fun and we can I'm have. I'm going to show you how to have fun at, at doing this. Yeah. And this is what it's like. It and do it safely. And Exactly. So here you got, and well, I'm not surprised it's New York, but. Well, as it, Jason and I, we, we kind of talked back and forth a couple of times on this. Um, you know, I told him, I, I said, you know, I, I knew, deep down, I knew it was only a matter of time before this, somebody tried to pass this action or this legislation somewhere in the United States to to take away things from students that gets them into the outdoors. Well, we, well, because they know better. They know best. Right, right. Right? You know, yeah, they, they, yeah. evidently. They, they know best. If that happened in New York? Yes. It would be interesting to get somebody's opinion on that who lives in New York. Yeah, we probably get a hold of a couple of people. I would think so. Maybe we'll send them that link and yeah. see, see what happens. Yeah, see what they're... Uh... So, but, but, you know, it just it amazes me when things happen like that. Because I know that... Uh, in the school archery program mm-hmm. is, uh, I know Heartland's got a really good team. Yep. Guy I, I used to work with, sons in it, and they were just down in Kentucky. Yep. Uh, at the national shooting tournament. And, you know, they have a blast. Well, and I also have heard from several people who have children who have maybe some attention disorders. Yep. And, and they use archery as a discipline to... Focus. Focus and get them channeled, you know, in concentration, and it's really helped the kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it's, you know, it, it's just not. 
Hey, here's a gun. Go out here and have fun. Well, Shoot up other, something. Okay, so that's the other. The, the ski teams we have yeah. in the state, right? Yeah. They're, they're promoting that. Exactly that. It, it shows them how to safely handle a firearm. Yep. Uh, go enjoy the sport. And it, Same thing with archery. How to safely handle archery equipment. Safely shoot. Safely shoot in masses, no less, because you're on a lot, shooting line of yep. a bunch of people. Yep. I, I hear you. It, it's amazing. So, you know what? Interesting. Not surprised. Yeah, I will uh, actually in the show notes on this on the podcast. I'll uh, I'll put that link to that story. So, okay. so everybody that's listening to the uh, the podcast, if you go to our show notes, uh, follow the link back over to our our uh, podcasting service page. It'll yep. be there. So right. So, well, I'm glad you had a good weekend teaching another hunter. Yeah, how it, it went? It was a blast, and it was a guy I used to work with uh, for 25 years. It was. Uh, it was a blast to share a hunt with somebody I know. Actually, we we've taken him goose hunting one time before as well. Sweet. So and, then, and there you got him up on the screen right now, smiling yeah. away. So oh yeah, I actually forgot we we got to put our picture back up here. We're sitting here talking. I got that picture up. I completely forgot. We need a director. Uh, That's the problem. When I put pictures, a, a, dire- on, a director and button clicker. right? Yeah, yeah. You know, right. We, so we put uh, we put pictures up, and all of a sudden, I just start to lose track of what's going on. I'm multitasking here. Exactly. But. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We had a great time. I want to wrap up the podcast portion oh. of the show here. So what? Billy Hoffman says the Fenton High School trap team won the state champ championships. Oh, the the their uh, trap shooting team. Yep. Very nice. Yeah, and Tim Seas has been in church, and he's missed it. But he can always watch the replay anyways. Yeah, Tim, make sure you go back because uh, I got a picture on, on the live stream here you need to check out. So. Right. So. Cool. But I tell you what, for everybody that's on the on the live stream here, hang on for just a second. We're going to wrap up the podcast right now. For all those of you listening on the podcast, you want to see what we've been talking about, go to our Facebook page. Uh, check out the live stream yeah. uh, that we did on Sunday night, and you'll see a repost of it on Wednesday. On YouTube? Sometime Wednesday on YouTube. I'll post a link on Facebook so you can watch it wherever all right sounds good you guys uh if you if you feel worthy uh if we're worthy of it you know make sure you share our our stuff we really appreciate it getting other people involved and seeing what we're up to absolutely all right that'll do it for us this week folks and don't forget you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m eastern time on goodtalkradio.com this episode was brought to you by pse archery carbon express fourth arrow camera arms wind scent hunting scent Killer food plots, seeds, supplements, and attractants. Cabela's. Spot shooters. Limb walker game calls. Twisted Minds bowstrings. Hunters blend coffee. Antler action. And family traditions tree stands. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.